Good afternoon. Welcome to our divided session for this afternoon. I'm Pastor Frank. You should know me already. Um, I am uh, a Filipino-American pastor dito sa Cebu City. And uh, my mother is Filipina. My father is American. And uh, I was saved in 97, called to preach in 99. And I am a ministry, I have been in the ministry now for many years. I forgot how many years that makes it. But God has been good. I'm so glad to be here today with you. And we're talking about campus ministry today. Campus ministry. Say it together, please. Ready, go. Say it. Campus ministry. I'm going to share to my heart. This is not really like preaching talaga. This is not really like mensahe gyud. Um, this is really just encouragement, advice, just from my heart for uh, to our students uh, to start a campus ministry on your campus and not to waste your your time in college especially especially now dito sa Pilipinas my senior high na diba sa una walang plano nga senior high but uh, some of you have been put in grade 11 and grade 12 and you did not plan that when you started grade 9 you were not planning to have a grade 12 but it's out of your hands God did that but how can you use those extra two years for God's glory I'm talking about this today um, campus ministry Specifically, starting a legit campus ministry in the Philippines. I'm going to share to you some of my experiences, my advices, and I believe nga malaki yung blessing para sa, para sa atin. I, this is going to be a great blessing to all of us, and uh, God will get the glory. So before we start, let's pray. Let's ask God to bless us, and I'm excited already today. Bahala yung eyebags ko ha, bahala lang. I am excited about this this wonderful topic and and I believe at the end of this topic I believe that there be there's going to be somebody out there estudiante parin and you say uh, by God's grace I'm going to start a campus ministry in my college and uh, why don't you join me in prayer let's ask God to bless us please Heavenly Father Lord we're thankful today Lord we're thankful for this afternoon for your goodness for your mercy and Lord we know Lord that you're good that you're God Lord I pray Lord that you would put in the hearts of our college students Lord our Baptist college students all over the Philippines to be soul winners on their campus. Lord, I pray, Lord, that the that they would be instruments for the gospel. And Lord, I pray, Lord, that as they uh, preach the gospel on the campus, that you would open doors, that many sto- souls will get saved, many students will come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And just bless our time now. Make it profitable, Lord, for your honor and glory. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, thank you so much for being with us this afternoon, and uh, I'm talking today how to start a legit campus ministry dito po sa Pilipinas. And uh, once again, let me just share to you, I'm a missionary in Cebu City. So, syempre, my similarities talaga from Cebu City, Davao City, Manila, Metro Manila, um, I, I'm thinking all the way to Kampampanga, all the way up there on the on the western side there from Manila Bay all the way up the Endlex. And uh, wherever you are, bisag asa ang imong lugar. If you're a college student, you have a campus, and you have a privilege to be a ministry on that college campus. So don't put that, uh, don't make that small because that's that is a privilege. And uh, I hope today that you'll have uh, a passion, and that your desire to be a soul winner on your campus will increase by the end of our. Uh, lecture or you know ginatawag seminar today so let's continue here please uh and i hope and i hope and i pray that uh as we uh go through this that you are also taking notes they should these notes should already be in your conference notebook uh i put them there because i want you i really want you to start a campus ministry and uh i am not your pastor if now if i am your pastor i want you to but i'm not your pastor so uh, we're going to talk about this later too. The best thing to do is really go to your pastor, share to him your desire for a, for a campus ministry. And I guarantee you, your pastor wants to see God bless you. He wants to see you grow in your leadership. And he wants to see college students saved. So this is something that your pastor will love. I promise you. Okay. So we're talking about starting a legit campus ministry in the Philippines. Cool title, huh? Let's continue here. This is our hashtag, by the way, if you want to look at our pictures from the past, just from our campus ministry, you can just Google hashtag student revival movement and you'll see all of our pictures there. And that's the purpose of a hashtag. Kung hindi mo alam 
Alamna, uh, you know what the purpose of a hashtag is. It's really to organize posts and to re e easy post retrieval in the future. So uh, I want to talk to you about some of our campus ministries first. Uh, we started the campus ministry at the Uni University of the Visayas, the main campus. Our founding president is Brother Jim De La Torre, and uh, he's going to be hopefully graduate. Uh, he hope already graduated. Hopefully he'll be passing his board exam of civil engineering this year. And by next year, during the next online Baptist Youth Conference, he will be officially Engineer De La Torre. And uh, uh, he was uh, a product of our, of our, really of our campus ministries and things like that uh, for his discipleship. Though he was saved on another campus, he really grew under our uh, student revival movement. And that's where, we, that's where we met him. So the University of the Visayas campus. And then Brother Christian Ibarra. He was our founding president for the. Uh, by the way, he's a doctor. He's gonna be. He's starting to be a doctor, and uh, graduated Velez College. Okay, of course, he was one of those guys that doesn't get a graduation ceremony. I know, maraming, maraming mo uh, sa ma, sa dito sa Pilipinas. No more graduation. You can you can have a graduation on Facebook lang live stream. Amen. So uh, we started the uh, campus ministry, Velez Campus, Velez College, and uh, if you're not familiar, that is the. Harvard of Medical Schools, Gito Po sa Pilipinas. So, wonderful blessing. I'll share to you that story later. And uh, and what a blessing. And then also, Cebu Normal University. Actually, Cebu Normal University is one of the first campuses I ever visited. And uh, I saw something there. Uh, because it's a teacher training school. I'm, a, I'm now a professional teacher. Let passer. Okay. Uh, but if you're able to reach one teacher, then you're going to reach 50 students every year. Because every teacher will have a homeroom advisory for every year for the next 25 years so just put the math together you can reach one student in college and then reach a whole engineering firm you can reach one doctor in college and then reach a whole hospital and you can reach uh, one teacher in school and then in the future reach hundreds of other students just because you reached one teacher and what a blessing to understand the the gravity and the weight and the responsibility of campus ministry are you starting to get excited now for campus ministry? Uh, I will say this, campus ministry is not easy, and you're going to find that out if you ever start. I have some pictures here, just through the years here, of our college campus ministries. Uh, Pastor, how did you do that? How did you get into the college, and they let you use the rooms, they allow you to use their microphones, they allow you to set up a kiosk on campus? Uh, let me get the mouse over here if I can. Uh, right here, this right here, we're having a soul winning booth on the college campus, okay? A soul winning booth on the college campus. This was the Founders Day, and because we are a legitimate student organization, we were granted the privilege to have a soul winning booth on campus during Founders Day. If you're familiar with Founders Day, mga estudiante, that's like the day when all the organizations come together. And then they have like promotions and join our organization, you know, like that. Uh, our soul winning booth uh, was kind of two, you know, really kind of two primary reasons. The first one is souls. We want to share the gospel. And the second is if any students want to sign up and be a part of what we're doing. And then uh, over here, this is Brother Jairus. Brother Jairus is our first president of the Cebu Normal Campus. I always joke with him because Sha. Siya lang yung hindi bakla sa yung batch niya. <laughs> and uh, we're so blessed to have Brother Jairus there. Uh, really, lalaki la, 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 talaga sa mga teachers. And um, uh, also a pastor's kid. So thank you, Jairus, for being a blessing over the years. Graduate na, graduate na. So uh, that's me there preaching. This is to the Cebu Normal students during our last lecture, February 2020. Time flies very fast, but that, that was a blessing. Uh, oops, shouldn't have one up. But uh, this picture right here, this is Dr. Stan Prasha with BIMI. Iyang Asawa, see si Dr. Mali Prasha. So Dr. Stan is a is a scientist with patented inventions in agricultural science. He is a creation science, and he's also an engineer. He's a creation scientist and an engineer specializing in geology and also in agricultural science and things things like that. Dr. Molly, his wife, is a retired a pediatrician. She's also a doctor of cardiology and a doctor in genetics. And um, we, we invited them to come to the college campus and we were able to, uh, to, to use their expertise to draw in a crowd and preach the gospel to them. 
and still fulfill the need of having, uh, 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 what do you call that, seminars, and then we give them a certificate for attending the seminar, so on and so forth. This picture right here, this is actually the Asian College of Technology in Cebu, and one of the first colleges I ever went to for sharing the gospel. So one of the teachers there was saved uh, in my ministry back in 2008, and uh, she became a teacher in that school. She invited me to come in. After going there so much, the guards did not even stop me. I have no ID, no, you know, the no ID, no entry, no problem for me. Maybe kapal yung face ko, but I just walk in, just say hi to the guard, and I would just walk the halls and preach the gospel to students that were just in the hallway. I remember one time there were students sitting in the hallway. I said, you, 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 uh, you have class now? They said, no, sir, no class. I said, okay, follow me. We're going to have Bible study in this empty classroom. And it came to the point where the, the classrooms were overflowing with students. And the dean found out, and the dean called me to the office. And he said, I heard you're having Bible studies on this campus. I said, yes, sir, that's true. He said, why didn't you come to me first? I could have given you the aircon room. I could have given you a room with air conditioning if you just came to me first. And it put, it put in my mind, I think by God's grace, we can do this legitimately. We can make a legit campus ministry. And that really got the ball rolling for this idea of having a legit campus ministry. And I'll share to you this in a moment, but over the years, God has blessed. This right there is Brother Jim. Brother Jim might be like many of your future college students who join your campus ministry. Jim was saved in a born-again church. Can you believe it? He was saved in a born-again church, but didn't start growing until he came to Cebu. And by God's grace, we met him in front of the college campus entrance, just passing out tracks. He looked at the track and saw the word Baptist on the back of the gospel track. And he said, hmm, Baptist. He attended our Bible study, and he has been with us ever since. I think that was back in 2016. If I'm correct, so it's been four years already, Brother Jim. I can't imagine that. But God has been so good to us. I can give you story after story just because we went. The first part of gospel is go. And you don't have gospel if you don't go. And you don't know, you never know if you don't go. So campus ministry is so unique. You have to just go and see what God is going to do and be willing to to see nothing for a while because that's what happens sometimes sometimes it is a dry barren desert uh, but where there is a little bit of water and you know it, it will grow so uh, what a blessing over the years to see what God has done this is not our history really just I threw some pictures on there to kind of share to you what has happened so that leads me to my uh, next Bible verse this is really our main Bible verse this is not really preaching huh Iokalimti huh this is, uh, this is really encouragement for you to start a college campus ministry. Uh, the Bible says in Ephesians 3.21. Now, this is the basis for my philosophy in campus ministry. Okay? And then I'm, I'm going to share you my testimony within the idea of campus ministry. So, unto him be glory in the what? In the church. Not the campus, but the, the church. By Christ Jesus, throughout all ages world without end amen so here here we go ready here's my premise here, here's my here's my uh, philosophy god's glory goes through the local church now this is important because nowadays there are many campus ministries that are not local church centered and they are what we call parachurch ministries and this this is not biblical because it takes away glory from god because god's glory must go through the local church I hope you understand that that's very important because if you want God to bless your college ministry, you need to do it through your local church. That This is why your pastor is so important. Your pastor, of course, is a shepherd that God has given to you at your local church. And because of that, you need to go to him. You need to ask him. You need to talk to him, get permission from him, get his heartbeat. He's going to be the preacher coming to your college campus to preach the gospel. Or if he won't do it, then he will assign somebody to do it. And this is very important because God's glory must go through the local church. By the way, forgive me for using my hands, huh? Italiano ako kasi. And Italians love to use their hands when they preach and when they speak. Anyways, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Hope that's an encouragement to you. Now, let's dive in today. I'm going to give you step-by-step -step process on how to start 
a college campus ministry and make it legit talaga. Okay, legit talaga yung campus ministry mo if you're going to follow these steps. Pastor, why? Because I've experienced this at least three times. And Lord willing, we're going to be adding more campuses this summer. By the way, because of quarantine, extended summer. Woo! But it also means we start later. There's a possibility college will start in August of this year in 2020. And that's bad news for you, especially if you're planning to uh, leave school earlier. So now the talk right now is August to April is going to be the new school year for 2020 and then 2021 school year. So let's put this in our hearts, please, uh, before we continue that God's glory must go through the local church. My desire, okay, is for you as a college student to have a college campus ministry and then it's channeled through your local church. I don't want to control it, but if I can be a blessing, let me know, okay? I want your pastor to lead it, and uh, if you could encourage him, and I know uh, if you can explain it to him, because many times, you know, I know as a pastor for myself, uh, I like it, but I want to know more about it, you know? I want to know everything first before I make my final decision, and uh, that's what this is for, and uh, the outline today, the notes, you can share it with your pastor, and I know he'll He'll, he will be blessed. If you're going to be a soul winner, your pastor will be blessed. Trust me. Okay, let's talk about this today. Number one. So number one step to start a campus ministry, you will need three key people who will serve a primary role. There's three key people who will serve a primary role. This is in the beginning of the campus ministry. Okay, so the first one, of course, is the pastor or a preacher on the outside. So you need somebody on the outside who's a pastor or a preacher, and then this man is the one who will do the preaching. Now, that's important. Why? Because if you have a student do the preaching, he does not have the experience and the wisdom and the knowledge that the pastor has. So what would happen is the campus ministry would be limited because uh, you wouldn't have the presence or you wouldn't have the leadership of a pastor. So this is important, okay? This is my first ingredient. Uh, really in starting a campus ministry, the first person must be the pastor on the outside. Notice the word I put outside. The pastor is not inside yet. He's on the outside. The pastor will lead you from the outside because you are the student on the inside. So that leads me to this Bible verse. Salute all them that have the rule over you and all the saints. They of Italy salute you. So notice the top here. Uh, salute all them that have the rule over you. Okay, your pastor has the rule over you. As Baptists, we believe in pastoral authority. Your pastor is your authority, so make sure you go to him first before you blindly start a college campus ministry without the permission of your pastor. God cannot bless it because the glory has to go through the local church. Are you starting to follow so far? Let's do this. Uh, let's put it, put this in your heart, put this in your mind, bank it that your pastor needs to be involved, okay? Uh, his leadership, if he, if he will not do it directly, he will assign somebody to be the preacher for that campus uh, and for those Bible studies. So a pastor or preacher on the outside. Uh, number two, you need to have students on the inside. Students on the inside. Pastor, what does this mean? Here's what it means. It means that you need to have students inside who are Baptist already, okay? Now, the reason why is because they will still function in leadership positions. They will be choosing songs uh, that you sing. Maybe you bring the guitar to school, and then you have a Bible study after class on Tuesday afternoon, and then you want to invite them to church on Wednesday night. Then the one who chooses the songs it needs to be a Baptist, okay? We are not trying to start another born-again organization. We are starting, we, we want to propagate Baptist organizations. Why? Because already in your school, you probably have Born again organizations. See, si Pastor, oh, talaga. We have we have born again uh, campus ministry in my school, but no Baptist campus ministry. Pastor, bakit? Because you did not start yet. You have to be the one to start it. Amen. And the reason why they have those ministries is because they are parachurch. But as Baptists, we believe in local church. So we believe in something that I call para sa church. Okay. Para sa church. So in that in in that regard, because the local church is leading it, there is limited resources and limited uh, uh, what do you call it? Limited people involved in the ministry. But God's glory must go through the local church. So you need students on the inside, 
preferably Baptist students, okay? And then last ingredient about the three key people, you need a Christian teacher or faculty member on the inside who can function as the advisor. And this is very important because when you go to the school and you ask for the requirements, I'll talk about that next, the requirements will be, it will be on there that you need to have an advisor. Now here's the cool part, ready? Faculty advise, faculty love being an advisor for a student organization. It helps them with their portfolio. So when they want a raise, it says that they are they are an advisor for a student organization. It looks like, you know, looks like lang ha? It looks like they are really busy. And they are more busy than the other teachers because they have more responsibilities after their name on their portfolio. Therefore, it makes them more eligible for raise. It makes them more eligible uh, to have a promotion. And, uh, and they would love that. Now, in that regard, it must be a Christian teacher. Now, here's the cool part, okay? Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be a Baptist teacher. Basta, a teacher who's a Christian who understands what you're doing, okay? And then just for me, Langha, for me, uh, the best case scenario is a teacher or an advisor who is hands-off. Somebody who does not want to get involved because the, if the teacher gets too involved, then she's taking leadership privilege away from the students. And I want you, student, to lead. Does that make sense? And you will grow in your leadership. Bahala lang freshman ka. Bahala lang nga second year lang ka. Listen, you can be a leader starting in your freshman year. You can. I've seen it many times. And uh, you will see it also. Uh, so anyways, uh, our first step in the process of starting a legit campus ministry is you will need at least three key people. Let's review, huh? The pastor on the outside, students on the inside, and you need a Christian advisor, faculty member or a teacher, somebody who can sign documents and approve, you know, functions and evangelistic events and such. Let's continue down here. Have the students, number two, have the students or student, not the preacher or the pastor, go to the dean's office and ask for the requirements to start a student-led organization in the school. Notice the quotation marks, okay? Student-led. That's important because the student organization is a student organization. Here's what it means. It means it's student-led. That means a pastor cannot go on the campus and say, I want to start an organization. Dean, ma'am, sir, I want to start it because he has no right. But in the Philippines, we have student rights. The students have a right to start a student organization. Amen ba? Are you following me? So don't have your pastor. I know he wants to do it. I've, I've done this before and then I failed. I realized it was a mistake. I should not have done it. Don't go to the dean's office pastor. Pastor, kung maminaw ka karun sa akong historia, ayaw sa, ha? Ayaw, ayaw, ayaw. Don't go to the dean's office. Because the deans cannot see your face. Because if they see your face, they will know this is not student-led. They will know this organization is being led by the church down the road. And they will not approve the organization. This organization must be student-led. Okay? So just train your students to lead. And in that regard, you're always training. The training never stops because your missionary on the campus will only be for four years at the most. Unless they continually fail some subjects. Okay, so uh, understand that if you have questions, please ask me. I'm willing to help you. Anything for more souls being saved, I would greatly love to see that. Amen? So let's review quickly. You have uh, three key people. They are number one. Number two, they are the what? Students. Number three, it is the advisor. And then number, number two, you need to have students or student. Uh, not the preacher, not the pastor, go to the dean's office. That means students on the inside need to ask for the requirements. Now, this is important. Every dean's office, every OSA, every student affairs office has a list of requirements to start a new student organization. They have it there. You have to just ask for it. Now, here is the golden time to do it. You need to do it in the first opening week of school. And I'll share to you the reason why in a moment. But the reason why, really, is because within the first month of school, all those documents need to be submitted because that is when they're going to approve the student organizations for the coming school year. And uh, when, you, when you get approved as a student organization, they give you a room. 
they give you a schedule and they give you rights they give you parking passes they give you permission to put up banners they give you permission to distribute tracks with your church's name you know the organization name and things like that so make sure you follow this now just from my experience I do it the way I said I really recommend you do it the way I said don't have pastor go there explain to him na student led so if they will see the pastor's face they will know it's not student led and they will deny the organization and we don't want that so number three follow the requirements in order and submit when complete this is important put it in order because here is what the Dean will do maybe the secretary of the Dean will do it or, or maybe the Dean will do it herself she's gonna open up open the file up there of all the requirements and she's gonna go through and she's gonna check it off one page at a time you're gonna have things in there like a student picture one by one picture with ID number with course and she's going to go through there. She's going to have. Uh, she's going to go through there. It's going to have a uh, bylaws, constitution, and I'll talk about about that in a second here. But it's, every every school is different in the requirements. But mostly, uh, it's going to have in there. You need to have an advisor. Who is your advisor? And then you have to have a letter that goes to the advisor, and you have to have a, the advisor write a letter back to you that she has accepted your invitation or he has accepted the invitation to be the advisor for the student organization it's a lot of work but it's worth it because during student day uh, during founders day during the intramurals you can set up a soul winning booth on your campus isn't that awesome isn't that cool by the grace of god you can do it i know you can we've already seen it done here in the philippines in cebu city three campuses already many souls are being saved i would already say hundreds of souls are getting saved hundreds of our last uh, lecture at Cebu Normal, we saw probably 54 students get saved. I think that was the right number, 54 students getting saved. We saw mga bakla crying, tears tears of joy because they found somebody that really loves them, and that is Jesus Christ. And this is the, this is the reason why we do this. We want to see students get saved and come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Okay, are you still following me? Are you still, are you still with me here? Uh, we're on point number three still. And it's already been almost 30 minutes in our lecture. Okay, so make sure you know the deadline of when to submit. This is important. The deadline is usually within the first month of opening of classes. Know the deadline because if you miss the deadline, then you cannot be an approved organization for the school year. And I know that you want to be an approved organization for the next coming school year. So make sure that you're in the student affairs office. You're talking to them. You're, you're learning their names. Here's my advice. Be friendly and cordial to the deans, especially the secretaries. Now, not I mean expression sa Cebu, sip sip, you know, sip sip. Don't sip sip, but just be respectful, be cordial, be friendly. Let them learn your name, but you first learn their name. For example, the student, uh, sometimes they have student secretaries, they're working. Learn the student secretary's name, and then bahala lang estudyante lang siya. Treat her or treat him as somebody who has authority over you because in that moment, they really do. They are the secretary for the dean and you are just a student. So be respectful and if you respect them, they will respect you. If you help them, they will help you. Something I've learned, just be, be friendly to them. Send them a box of Krispy Kremes from your organization every once in a while. Uh, send them, you know, uh, uh, send them a rose on Valentine's or something. I don't know. Do something that will let them know that your student organization cares for them and, and you are a partner on the campus to make a better campus, okay? And uh, let's continue here. Number four, you may follow the student revival constitution if you like. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you a copy of our constitution. Now, the name of our of our organization is called Student Revival. This is right there. You see it? Student Revival. Now, I picked that name specifically for this reason. Uh, students who want to see revival. That's what it is. I don't. I didn't want to name it Baptist Students United because if we do that, then Catholic students wouldn't want to join because it says Baptist in the name. Now, remember, this is simply from our church. This is this name. This organization we have here is just a branch of our local church because we believe in local church ministry. And then uh, many students have gotten saved. Many students have, have been saved. Now here's what I want to do. Just I'm just reaching out to you. If you want to do it, no problem. Um, because this might actually help you. 
Now, say for example, you're in Manila, you go to the student affairs office in Manila. Let's say for example, let's say Santo Tomas. You go to Santo Tomas, UST, and you say, hello po, we're going to start a student organization. Anong requirements para sa student organization bago? Oh. And then they say, oh, here you go, uh, miss, here's the, here's the requirements, okay? Now, if you want, you, you can borrow our name. I don't mind. Borrow our name because now we already have credential. Now we're a national organization. Does that make sense? And as a national organization, they are more likely to approve the organization. Does that make sense? Okay, so you can borrow our name. And if you're going to borrow our name, I will send you a copy of our student uh, bylaws and constitution. And our student bylaws and constitution are uh, on Microsoft Word format. And you can just exchange the name of your university uh, to fit your school. And then you can change the logo and everything too uh, to fit your school. But if you want to do that, we're very much willing to help you for the cause of Christ and for more souls to be saved. Okay, so in that line, in that regards, let me explain to you again what is parachurch, okay? Know the difference between parachurch and local church. Let me explain to you my experience. When I was in high school, okay, senior high in America, I was invited to a Bible study uh, at the home of at the home of a, of a student pastor. He was a pastor to the students. And uh, the name of the group was called Student Venture. And then later, they changed their name to Young Life. And when I got there, it was, to be honest, Lang, okay, I understand I understand that they wanted to do their best. But to be honest, it was the worst Bible study I've been to my entire life. It was one guy, he went around and made everyone go in a circle, and everyone had a different Bible, a different version of the Bible. One had ESV, the other one had NASB, the other one had NIV, the other one had NKJV. This, uh, I brought my KJV. And, they ever, and then so they all read the Bible verses from different versions. And then the student pastor said, okay, anong meaning para sa iyo? And then that girl would share what it means to her. He said, anong meaning para sa iyo? And then that young man would share what it means to him. And after 30 minutes, you don't, you don't know what the Bible says, but you know what everybody thinks. When he got to himself, he did not explain the verse. He just prayed for the snacks. And I said, this was the worst Bible study I have attended my entire life. I was only 17 years old, but that left an impression on me. I said, if I ever will do campus ministry, I will do it the right way. I will stand and speak. I think from Acts chapter 5, verse 12, I will stand and speak. By the way, that's important because when you stand, when you preach, when you stand and preach in front of students, you're lifted higher and it commands respect. This is the reason why. Don't limit your student organization to the students leading the Bible studies. You, you can lead the program, but make sure you get a pastor or a preacher in there who can speak with authority. And that makes the difference. It really does. Why? Because they are called by God. They have experience. They have wisdom. And they will be able to preach the Word of God in such a way that commands respect especially to very critical college students. College students can be very critical sometimes. And then if they see a student leading the Bible study, sometimes they will say, mm, Sino yan? Pareho lang? Pareho lang tayo? Okay? But anyways, I hope this is a, an encouragement to you. But no difference between parachurch and local church. Parachurch means it, it encompasses all different kinds of churches. Usually the born-again churches uh, have parachurch campus ministries. Okay? But... I believe in local church campus ministry. So Student Revival is a local church organization. If you want to adopt our name, it's no problem. Um, it, it might actually help you in, in getting approved kay national talaga already, national daan ang student organization nga Student Revival yung pangalan. So if you want to adopt our name, no problem. Uh, let me know how we can help you, okay? We would love to see God just blessing the college campus ministries. Basta, make sure that it's, it is connected to your church and under the ministry sa inyong pastor para sa church ninyo. Okay, and let me continue here quickly. Okay, uh, there are many uh, so-called school uh, or Christian school organizations they are that are not Baptist and meet during church hours, Wednesday night, Sunday night. Uh, this is wrong because it is trying to replace the local church. And this is very, this happens many times. Here in Cebu, we have uh, the Campus Crusade for Christ, which is a parachurch organization. I would not agree with what they do, even their music, everything, the, their connections. Uh, 
if it's Campus Crusade or Cru, C R U, uh, I would I would avoid it because they are parachurch and they will actually schedule activities during Sunday night. They will they will schedule activities on Friday night. They will schedule activities on Saturday when you should be soul winning with your own church, which is the reason why I would avoid them. IVCF IVCF is dangerous. Don't join IVCF. IVCF uh, it started out with good intentions, but their leadership now is really Pentecostal. And the leadership now is uh, it's parachurch and uh, get out of that. And I would recommend if you're in the Philippines, a estudiante ka dito sa Pilipinas, make sure you have a local church student organization, not a parachurch organization, because the parachurch will pull you away from your church. So we believe in para sa church, not in parachurch organizations for, for campus ministry. The Student Revival is a local church-based organization, meaning the local church of that area is the one that controls it. This is vastly different from a parachurch group. Student revival is more of a para or a para sa church group. Okay. Number five. Number five. Upon approval. So let's say, for example, you go back to the dean's office and you say, "Excuse me, po, uh, ma'am. Uh, we're just checking if our organization is approved. We fulfilled all the requirements." And she says, "Oh, po, here you go." It's approved already. Here's your certificate of approval. And then uh, you are now... By the way, if, if you're student officers, you automatically become part of who's who. I don't know if you understand that. You automatically become part of the campus leadership because you're an officer for a student organization and you increase your influence for Christ. Amen? Isn't that wonderful? And if you can increase your influence for Christ, you can use your position to exalt Christ as Savior and to emphasize to the students how much they need Jesus Christ. So upon approval, upon approval, whoops, here we go. Upon approval, remember that uh, these documents must be submitted yearly, and you only have a four-year window to be a missionary on your campus. So get the dates of submission for the financial and activity reports. So after you get approved, they will ask you for yearly reports. They will ask you for a financial report yearly, and they will ask you for activity report yearly. And that would be uh, organized by your student officers. For example, the secretary, you have a vice president and a president. You even have a treasurer who treasures zero money. It's kind of funny. But uh, make sure you take care of that ahead of time because you don't want your, you don't want your approval to be revoked. If your approval is revoked, then you're not going to be able to rent the Aircon Assembly Hall for free. It's free if you're a student organization. Isn't that awesome? But you have to make sure that you are not going to fall behind on the due dates. Make sure that you have these submitted properly, yearly, and then make sure that you don't miss that window uh, th that you need. And in regards to the four-year window, let me, let me emphasize like this, huh? Let's say, for example, Pastor, this is really my heart. I really want to be a, a, a spiritual leader on my campus. I want to be a soul winner on my campus. Uh, let me share to you the, 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 the story of my friend Joshua. My friend Joshua already died. He died at, a, at an early age. He was only 30 plus but died of kidney failure. I asked him one day, I said, Joshua, what college did you go to? And he said, oh, I, I went to the college over there uh, in downtown in Cebu. I said, what did you do for God during your college years? And uh, we were actually standing uh, outside of uh, another campus because we were partners in reaching that campus. He was a professor on that campus teaching in the IT department. And I asked him, I said, Joshua, I said, uh, what have you done before in college for ministry? He bowed his head and he was, he was really sad. And I said, Pastor, he said, it's sayang, sayang akong college, sayang, sayang yung college years ko. I said, why? What happened? He said, I was a backslider during my college years. He said, when I went to college, I had no money, and I compromised my Baptist faith. I compromised my Christianity, and I became a dancer in the dance troupe. So we would dance in the fiesta during the da during the fiestas. We traveled to the province, dance in that fiesta. I was a hip-hop dancer in the dance troupe. He said, four years passed, and uh, we would get money. If we danced somewhere, they, they would give us money for dancing. And then I would take that money. I would use that to pay my tuition, to help pay my, my lunch and things like that. And he said, but I wasted four years of my college. He said, I wish I could go back and use my college years for the Lord. So here's what I'm doing. 
I'm warning you now. Don't waste your college years on the world. Use your college years for the Lord. Don't waste your college years. Kapatid, I know right now you're thinking, Hala, that's me. I'm wasting my college years. It doesn't have to be the case, kapatid. You can give your life back to God. Maybe you're going to be a senior. Maybe you're going to be last year, fourth year. You have one more year left. Use it for the Lord. Be a soul winner on your college campus and bring souls to Christ. So upon approval, don't forget those important dates and you have to submit your yearly reports to the dean's office, okay? Not, not to me. You should always be in a constant state of training freshmen and such. Because the four-year window of ministry is not going to last long, in fact, it's a very short time of ministry because you're only a college student for four years, then you should always be in a, co- a state of constant training. Constant training. After you graduate, you get an, an alumni ID for every college you graduate from. If you get the alumni ID, it means you have unlimited access to the college campus after you graduate. So here's my, here is my uh, advice for you. If you're already a graduate or you're going to graduate, after you graduate, get your alumni ID because you can go back to the college anytime as long as you have your alumni ID and you can be a missionary to the college campus. Maybe ikaw yung preacher para sa Bible study nila. Maybe maybe you will be the preacher to preach the gospel to the incoming freshman students who Catholic parin. Maybe they're from different culto or something, but they need to hear the gospel and God can use you as a missionary sa campus mo. Okay, number six. Start planning Bible studies, but be flexible. Let me just share to you some advice regarding uh, your Bible study schedules on the campus. Every college campus is unique. Every, how do I say this? Every course has its own subculture. The nurses have their own subculture. The educators have their own subculture. Even within education, the the the, stu- the education students have their own subculture. Hello, the English students are not the same as the Mape students. If you know what I'm talking about, they're very different. So within those regards, you have to set your Bible study schedules to fit the availability of the subcultures of the courses and uh, if you're a student you will know when the bible study available when the bible study is the best available time um, just one example prime example lang our last bible study at Cebu Normal University was set for 6:30 p.m. on Tuesday night we don't have bible study on Wednesday night because i want you guys to be in your campus uh, sorry, in your in your local church for for midweek service, prayer meeting. Some some churches, Baptist churches, like kami Thursday night yung prayer meeting namin. So we don't have any college campus ministry on Thursday night because we want our college students to come to church on Thursday night for the midweek service. And then uh, so so for us the untouchable day is the midweek service day, and then also Sunday, and uh, really anywhere in between that. So you have Monday and Tuesday. And you even have Friday and Saturday that become really uh, prime time for these kind of Bible studies. And uh, you have to be willing to invest a Friday night in souls. You have to be willing to invest a, a Tuesday night. Maybe you maybe you have to eat your lunch or your dinner later because you're going to be attending this meeting. But at Subu Normal, we started at 6.30. The students were all finished at 6. And as they're coming down the stairs, our students, the college campus students, the student officers would give them flyers and say, hey, you're invited to our meeting. We have a meeting right now, and here's our topic. And, of course, we talked about our, our hot topics. I'll talk about it in a second here. Huh? Okay, so you will want to sit down with a pastor in charge and get his thoughts and ideas. Uh, though it is student-led, uh, we as Baptists are still to be led by our pastors. So aim for catchy topics. This is important. Because you have the privilege to put up tarpaulins, you can put a tarpaulin three weeks before the seminar. Example, at univers- the, U- the University of the Visayas, we put a sign there, a, a big tarpaulin. It said, the origin of life. Come and discover the origin of life. So all of the atheists, all of the agnostics, all of the evolutionary thinking students, this piqued their interest. They were interested. And we had a big turnout on that day. I believe 40 plus students were saved on that day. What a blessing. So uh, during the, by the way, every time you have a meeting, take an attendance sheet. Because the attendance sheet will allow you to follow up the students who were saved 
during that program. Okay, um, let me give you this advice too because this happened before. Uh, way back before, probably 10 years ago already, uh, when I first started doing campus ministry, I met a college student uh, and he said, Pastor, would you help me with the start this start this campus ministry? I said, no problem. I said, let's do it like this. But he said, no, I want to do it like this. And because he didn't follow my advice, he said, I want to have debates. And by the way, let me just say this, okay? Uh, debates are most of the time unprofitable. I, listen to what I said, huh? Most of the time unprofitable. They are profitable if you do them the right way, okay? They take a lot of work, and then uh, sometimes it takes too much work, and then nothing really happened. Let me say it like this, okay? Nothing can replace the preaching of the Word of God. So primarily, our student organization focuses on preaching. We want to get students under a preacher. If the students are under the preacher, they will hear the words of God. And as they hear the words of God, their hearts will be turned. The Bible says that their hearts are turned through the foolishness of preaching. And you want to get somebody in there that can preach the gospel and that is willing to, uh, to look a little crazy in front of students so that, so that students will get saved. That is vitally important. And uh, I would never replace preaching for debates. Uh, it doesn't matter what the topic is. Uh, don't replace preaching with debates. Don't replace preaching with singing only, with concert lung. Because preaching is the way that God will turn the hearts of those students. Okay? And uh, remember what I said, because that is all biblical principles. That's not advice lung, huh? that is Bible. The student revival is the way that we get preachers in the school. Some students will never hear preaching again. And that is true. I remember our last lecture, we had about 10 kabuk uh, bading. We had about 10 bading that joined our lecture. And the lecture was called Gender Identity. Okay? And, uh, and uh, by the way, I when the bading will come in our school, when the bakla will come in the school, you know what I will do when they come in the school? I will give them a hug. And I will let them know that Jesus Christ loves them. And I will not change my message because my message is from the Bible. I will not compromise the message. And because I love them, I will preach the truth. Does that make sense? And uh, uh, that's very important. So uh, make sure that preaching is the primary focus of every meeting. There's going to be preaching and there's going to be an invitation. Uh, the invitation is the opportunity that somebody uh, that you give somebody to accept Christ as their Savior and just giving them, giving them a chance, giving them opportunity. But many of the students who will attend these meetings will never go to a Baptist church. They will never go to Baptist church because they're from Catholic background or maybe their background is another kind of Protestant group. And then if they're a Protestant group, maybe UCCP, then they're taught to look down on Baptist. Oh, Baptist. And then if you invite them to a Baptist church, they will never go. But they will come to a student organization meeting when it has a catchy topic. Uh, we had uh, February 14, we had a special meeting called True Love Waits on February 14. So during that time, okay, uh, all those students are thinking about their love life and and so forth. And they're very much willing to attend a lecture about true love waits. Well, I hope you're following so far. I hope this is a blessing to you. And uh, let me just continue here. huh? As we come to a close today, I want you to know that you can email me directly at obycphilippines at gmail.com. That is our email address for this uh, uh, conference. And uh, we'll give you a copy of our bylaws and constitution and also give you a certificate uh, as an official partner of Student Revival if you want, okay? Just reaching, if you want to reach out to me, I'm throwing you a lifeline, but I would just love to see souls get saved. I would love to see God get the glory. And I believe that, from my knowledge, nothing like this has really been formed before, at least in the Visayas. I don't know about uh, Metro Manila. Maybe you're already doing this. If you are, continue. Um, or maybe you'd like to partner somehow, some way with us to reaching the students all over the Philippines. Let me share this to you before we continue. Be a dreamer. Be a dreamer. Have a vision for souls on your campus. And uh, all these hundreds of college students, really, it really just all started with a vision, with a dream, uh, just, to, just to reach the college students with the gospel of Christ. And God blessed it. And I will say this. Uh, God will open doors. He really will. This word is not bound. By the way, yung that meron yung 
theme sa conference natin. Our theme is the Word of God is not bound. God's Word is not bound. Paul said in 2 Timothy 2.9, Though I am bound, God's Word is not bound. And uh, that is so true. Listen, college student, senior high student, as you're listening to this right now, I want you to challenge yourself to be a dreamer. Think big on your campus. But pastor, I'm shy. Bahala lang yung shy mo. Pastor, I'm not good in front of people. Bahala lang. For the cause of Christ, are you willing to get over that insecurity? Are you willing to let God help you with that insecurity so that people can come to a saving knowledge of Christ and be saved from hell forever? Amen? The book of Jude talks about uh, pulling them from the fire. And that's exactly what we're doing, just pulling them from the fire because we don't want them to die and go to hell. The Bible says in Proverbs 29, verse 18, Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Can I ask you, do you have vision for your school? Do you have vision for your campus? Why don't you pray with me right now and ask God to give you a vision for souls sa campus mo, sa campus ninyo, Maybe after this lecture, after this after this break time, why don't you text some of your friends, Baptist, on your camp campus and say, Bro, hey sis, why don't we come together, let's talk to pastor, and let's see if we can start a college campus ministry sa, camp, sa campus natin. And I believe by God's grace you can do it. We've already done it. We're not even a lot. Hindi, hindi mi um, um, maraming. We're just very few. But I know by the grace of God, God can bless this and you can be a missionary in your campus. Why don't you pray with me, please? Let's, let's pray. Let's ask God to bless it. Heavenly Father, Lord, we're so thankful today, Lord, for this wonderful topic, Lord, of starting a campus ministry. And God, I pray, Lord, for all the students listening right now. God, I, God, I really pray, Lord, that you would convict their heart, that they would have a burden for souls. And Lord, we know that souls are dying and going to hell because they don't know Jesus Christ. And Lord, forgive us, Lord, for having so much insecurity, Lord, that we're not willing to take a leadership role, that we're not willing to step out by faith and get a little uncomfortable just so somebody can know you as Savior. God, I pray for these college students right now that are listening. I pray you challenge them. I pray you convict them, Lord, to step up, Lord, and be a blessing and be an example and be a leader on their college campus for the cause of Christ and for the gospel to be preached. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, thank you so much, guys. This has been, uh, I'm going to pour my heart out and, and share to you what's on my heart, okay? Hope this is a blessing to you. And hindi uh, lang this is not watery eyes, huh? this is uh, allergies lang, huh? allergies, allergies. Hindi, hindi siya tears, huh? But thank you so much, guys. Uh, let's take a break, and then we have another session uh, coming up here in a few minutes, okay? God bless you guys. Thank you so much. And then let me give you that email again. You can write it down there, obycphilippines at gmail.com. And then uh, we'll, we'll just forward you the Microsoft Word copy of our Constitution and Bylaws. That will be part of your requirements, okay? Hope this is a blessing to you guys. Love you guys in the Lord. Thank you so much. Maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. Uh, uh, salamat kaayo sa, sa inyong tanan. Marajaw karajaw sa inyong... I don't know. That was Surigaonan. Anyways, thank you guys. God bless you. See you on the next session.